Dr. Abbas is a lecturer in law at the Queensland University of Technology and chief investigator with the Australian Centre for Health and Law Research. Dr. Abbas has studied patent law and the challenges that it poses for public healthcare systems, particularly in the mass manufacture of certain medicines. Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Abbas. Uh, I'm a lecturer in law at the Faculty of Faculty of Business and Law. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land where Curiosity now stands. I pay my respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I recognize that these lands have always been places of teaching, learning, and research. I'm grateful to the Thrive Project for providing me this uh, with this opportunity to talk on an important topic. The topic of my presentation is SDG3, Good Health and Wellbeing, Challenges Posed by Patent Law. There are two dimensions of this topic, the innovation failures of the patent system and the access failures of the patent system. Because of the limited scope of this presentation, I will uh, confine my talk to the innovation failures of the patent system only. Uh, this is the brief overview of my presentation. I will touch upon the issue of evergreening of drug patents and the issue of neglected tropical diseases, the issue of access to medicines on the global agenda. In September 2015, 193 member states of the United Nations adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which put public health at the center of sustainable development. Target number 3.8 specifically relates to the issue of access to medicines. In July 2016, the United Nations Human Rights Council adopted a landmark resolution for promoting access to medicines. The resolution called upon states to promote access to medicines for all through the use of TRIPS flexibilities. In September 2016, the United Nations High Level Panel on Access to Medicines released its report. In 2020 the uh, issue of equitable access to health technologies has been on the global agenda because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the issue of access to medicines has been on the uh, global agenda in the recent past, ever since the adoption of the TRIPS agreement and coming into being of the WTO World Trade Organization. Importance of drug innovation and access for achieving SDG3 and relevant SDGs. The United Nations High Level Panel Report on Access to Medicines released in September 2016 stated that innovation is vital to achieving the 2030 Agenda's goal of improving the health and well being for all people at all ages. Equitable access to affordable medicines is another key pillar of universal health coverage. So, both innovation in the health sector and access to the innovative health technologies. They are important in terms of achieving the uh, SDG3, not only SDG3, but also other uh, goals, sustainable development goals, because good health is a prerequisite for economic growth and social progress. Good health enhances the ability of a community to develop human capital, undertake economic activities, and attract investment. There is a two way relationship between poverty and ill health. Poverty contributes to disease, while disease also contributes to poverty. Innovation gap, uh, despite the excellent public health value of vaccines, producing and selling vaccines is considered unattractive from a commercial perspective. Mass manufacturing and distribution of low cost products with only marginal benefits per unit compares poorly to the development of highly profitable, low volume specialty drugs. So the business model of the uh, of the brand name pharmaceutical industries to go for high profit, low volume drugs instead of going for low profit, high volume drugs. So they want easy profits. Only a handful of companies dominate the global vaccine market, selling essentially variations of the same 10 to 15 existing vaccines with relatively little innovation in new infectious diseases. Profit-driven R&D, the predominant model for R&D relies on patents and market exclusivity to generate high rate of return for originator companies that use some portion of profits to invest and reinvest in new drug development. That model is driven by corporate interest, not health outcomes. 
health outcomes are not the focus. Uh, the, the, the decisions to invest in R&D are not informed by the health needs of the, of the global population. It favors fragmentation and secretive competition and precludes the free exchange of knowledge and learning from each other's successes and failures. So there is no collaboration. Innovation failures in the pharmaceutical sector are well documented. The National Institute of Healthcare Management found that only 15% of new drugs are highly innovative. One of the contributing factors is evergreening of the pharmaceutical patents. Patents for new formulations are slight modifications of the same active ingredient. Patents for new combinations of existing drugs. Patents for new use of a new of an already known drug. Patents for new dosage forms are a new delivery route or different form of administration of existing drugs. So you are doing just little bit tweaks and not coming up with any uh, genuine innovation, but still you are able to extend your market exclusivity. Twofold negative impact of evergreening of drug patterns, innovation failures. Instead of focusing on genuine innovations, drug companies divert their attention to risk-free or low risk and less costly incremental innovations. Excess failures, high cost of drugs because of delayed generic competition. When you have extended market exclusivity, the generic competition is delayed. Generic competition results in significant decrease in drug prices. For instance, the cost of patented HIV ARVs was approximately $10,000 per person per year. Generic competition would reduce this price to only $150 or less per person per year. So the generic competition can make a huge difference for, for the people with the low purchasing power. How to fix the evergreening problem? Patent litigation is not practically viable option to fix the problem because patent litigation is notoriously risky, costly, lengthy, and cumbersome. The presumption of validity of granted patents uh, favors the patent in litigation. The other option is to apply public health sensitivity, sensitive patentability criteria. The TRIPS agreement provided this flexibility to the member states to define patent, uh, patentability criteria. Capacity building of patent examiners to apply rigorous public health sensitive standards of patentability providing procedural mechanisms to challenge validity of questionable patents. What are procedural mechanisms? This is patent opposition is a procedural safeguard provided under the TRIPS agreement. The WTO member states can choose what patent opposition model they are going to provide within their jurisdiction. They can choose to have both pre-grant and post-grant opposition, either pre-grant or post-grant, or no patent opposition at all. So the WTO member states can wisely use that flexibility to, to curb the evergreening of pharmaceutical patents by combining high patentability standards with a mechanism, a procedural safeguard to challenge the validity of questionable patents. The issue of neglected tropical diseases. The patent system's monetary rewards are designed in such a way that it discourages investment in the discovery of drugs which market for which market returns are small or uncertain. The system works only where markets are lucrative and profits are high, as I talked about this earlier in my previous slides. The issue of neglected tropical disease has been uh, on the global agenda and it has caused serious concerns. The drug can be divided into two broad categories. First is global drugs like cancer drugs and HIV drugs, uh, vaccines uh, that, that are created for uh, rich markets, but also not only for rich markets, but are also needed by the developing world. The second category is the drugs that are needed only by poorer countries, like drugs to treat TB or malaria. The drugs specific to third world are not a priority for uh, of multinational pharmaceutical corporations because of less financial gain. It is claimed that 
10% of global health research is devoted to conditions that account for 90% of the global disease. So 90% of the R&D investments go to the problems faced by the rich population, that is 10%, and only 10% of the R&D investment go to the problems faced by the 90% population on this planet. So it's a big divide. The patent system's monetary reward is designed in such a way that it discourages investment in the discovery of drugs for which market returns are small or uncertain. The decision of drug companies to invest in R&D is aimed to profit maximization with little concern about the social impact of their decisions. They are not uh, organizations, welfare organizations, they are businesses and their decisions are focused on maximizing their profits. Big Pharma is uh, readily willing to invest in drugs to eliminate facial wrinkles and to trade erectile dysfunction, which provide greater certainty of financial returns. The diseases like Ebola, Zika, and yellow fever are neglected because of low prospects of earning high profits. The innovation gap highlights connections of SDGs with SDG 5 and 10 that aim at reducing inequality. This innovation gap questions the ability of the existing innovation system to translate R&D investments into better global health. What is the solution to this problem? Delinking is one of the proposed solutions. Delinkage involves separating the R&D function from the production, sale, and distribution functions. The United Nations High-Level Panel Report on Access to Medicines recommended delinking the cost of innovation from the price of the resulting products and proposed that governments should negotiate a binding convention that delinks the cost of R&D from the end prices. We will discuss it a bit more. What are the options available? One of the options is uh, open source drug discovery. Open source drug discovery approach is based on the idea of cooperation and sharing of results between various teams or groups working in various stages of drug discovery and development. An open source project has the following two essential attributes. Number one, the project's data must be open access. Number two, the project must provide a forum for open collaboration. Open source methods cut down duplication of effort and widen the pool of researchers applying their expertise to a problem. So it is based on collaboration, not secretive effort. Financing the development of the products discovered open source is an issue as further development of promising drug candidates involves substantial monetary investments there is a need to develop a sustainable financing mechanisms to cover the costs of clinical trials. In addition to financial constraints, the following challenges can prevent this model from delivering on its promise, building a workable architecture or key infrastructure, incorporating a distributed and transparent peer review process, validation of the data placed on the, in the public domain, standardization and quality of the shared data and establishing a governance system. So there are issues in terms of organize, organizing uh, this effort. It's collaborative effort, good spirit, but how to organize it uh, in a proper way. It re uh, requires planning and financial resources. Use of prizes, grants, and rewards. Uh, research grants and innovation prizes are the most familiar examples of push and pull mechanisms. In the case of government grants, uh, governments identify potential innovators and fund their research work ex ante. In the case of financial inducement prizes, governments offer a financial reward ex post in exchange for an invention. Scholars like uh, Stiglitz and James Love support the uh, use of monetary prizes as a reward for innovation that is not linked to the price of the product. So you're not getting a patent, you get your reward. Richard Posner and William expressed their concern that a reward system would be hopelessly politicized. 
Amy Kapsinski uh, highlighted a similar concern that this approach is uh, susceptible to corruption and rent seeking as the government is required not only to decide the size of the grant, but also de to determine who would be potentially the most successful innovators. Governments, especially in low and middle income countries, might lack political will, foresight, and financial resources to effectively adopt this model. Because of financial and practical constraints in implementing the prize model to its full potential, it looks unlikely that this innovation model will completely replace the patent system anytime soon. The potential free rider problem. Taxpayers in the US or EU or Canada or or uh, other uh, high income countries might not be willing to engage in nonprofit taxpayer based funding of R&D projects if the resulting new drugs were made available to a global population, including other countries and re regions that are capable of investing their own resources in pharmaceutical R&D. To support uh, need driven innovation for health through a delinking model, a binding international R&D treaty should be negotiated to establish a collaborative global funding mechanism based on transparency of R&D costs. So everyone shares, everyone contributes according to their capacity. No one feels uh, that they, they are being wronged uh, and they are being, their funds have been, they are going to benefit others uh, who are not contributing anything to the uh, R&D. Public-private partnerships uh, aim at addressing the situation of market failure. They alter the incentive landscapes by functioning either as push mechanism or pull mechanism. They generally state a preference that research results be placed in the public domain. However, when necessary to meet the a project's objectives, patenting and private on ownership can be possible. Although the existing PPPs have addressed only a small portion of the disease candidates, they demonstrate that complementary models are workable. The main question is how their success can be scaled. There are success stories, but it's a policy issue how to scale these uh, initiatives. PPPs uh, do not involve self-sustaining revenue generation models. Policymakers should allocate funding for PPPs. The terms and conditions of the PPPs should be governed by public health benefit. Such partnerships should be guided by a collaborative approach of sharing know-how, technologies, and infrastructure. In order to create Trust between stakeholders, it is important to provide clear and transparent guidelines for managing future and background intellectual property. A clear view on the intellectual property ownership strengthens the collaboration. There are examples uh, of uh, success stories of uh, PPPs like uh, DNDI, CEPI, Gavi uh, Alliance. Patent pooling mechanism is another policy option. This is the mechanism for the collective management of IP rights and is based on the idea that patent holders voluntarily offer under certain conditions their intellectual property to the patent pool. Patent pools, uh, which act as a clearinghouse for the fast track licensing of rights, aim at enabling increased access to research data and facilitate follow on innovation. The transaction costs, bureaucratic processes, and risks are substantially reduced by patent pools. The success of this mechanism, however, largely depends on the voluntary participation of innovative pharmaceutical companies. The, uh, the cost and the time is reduced because the uh, generic manufacturers are the people uh, the, are the uh, follow-on innovators. They don't need to go to each uh, corporation to seek a voluntary license. The patent pool is working on their behalf and they get those licenses. Practical implications of the delinking model, efforts of uh, resource-rich uh, resource governments to direct 
technological innovation for military purposes resulted in major advances and breakthroughs in the development of modern weapons. Resource poor governments in the third world might be practically constrained to achieve such results in the case of neglected diseases through state-led and state-funded research. The de-linking model faces substantial informational and financial burden on governments. The governments in third world countries might lack political will, foresight, and financial resources to effectively adopt innovation models that incentivize needs-driven uh, research and development. Let's conclude this. Both robust development and equitable dissemination of health-related innovative technologies is of pivotal importance for implementing the health-related SDGs, especially SDG number three. The patent system's monetary reward is designed in such a way that it discourages investment in the discovery of drugs for which market returns are small or uncertain. Ideally, the incentive to develop new health technologies must be delinked from the prospect of reaping profits by adopting a need-driven, collaborative, open innovation model. Replacing the patent system with an alternative delinking model might not be a realistic option. Complementary models should be further developed and financially supported to address some of the failures of the predominant innovation model. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.